and welcome back to Politics in Hawaii with Dennis Esaki on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we'll be speaking with Pino Morita, former state representative and PUC chair. Among other things, Mina is also a former uh, Kauai County Planning Commissioner. Uh, in fact, she was the chairperson and on the Kauai County Council. And until recently, the Kauai Democratic Party chair. As a planning commission chair, there's Mina's name on many of her maps that were approved by the commission. And she has a fingerprint in a lot of things throughout our state. Uh, Mina, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. And thank you for taking the time to speak to us. Please, hi, uh, hi. Uh, please start by telling us a little about your background and why you went into public service. Well, first of all, thank you, Dennis, for having me on today. And I, I need to correct something. I was never on the county council. Oh, um, I ran for sorry. the county. I ran for the county council in 1990 and I lost. I lost by a couple hundred votes. It was the first time I ever ran for a public office. And um, I said I was never going to do it again. <laughs> but um, I, I um, first of all, I was born and raised on Lanai and I, I you know, went away for uh, work and school. Uh, when I came back to Hawaii in um, 1977, I was fortunate enough to be offered a job on Kauai at Princeville, and that's how I ended up on Kauai. And um, it was never thought I would get involved in politics locally. And, you know, I uh, was inspired by Joanne Yukimura. <laughs> and in the, in the mid 1980s, one of the hottest topics in Hanalei was the um, Hanalei boating issue where, where tour boats down the Napali coast was leaving from Hanalei Bay. And I became a community activist over that issue. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's an issue that had lasted for decades and was finally resolved by Governor Cayetano in a way in the, in the um, I think early 1990s when he basically said, this place is just too beautiful to be run over by commercial boats. And um, you know, that, that helped our effort, but um, we also won a lot of legal battles in court. But, you know, I, I, I really believed in Joanne's vision for um, Kauai, especially when she said, you know, what's good for the residents is good for the visitor and not the other way around. And um, that inspired me to run for the Kauai County Council in 1990. And like I said earlier, I lost that. Um, race by a couple hundred votes that I never was going to run for office and was fortunate that um, Joanne um, nominated me for the Kauai Planning um, Commission. And so I sat on the commission um, for one term and which was three years and then later was appointed to the police commission after that. But in 1996, I ran for the state house. Um, at that time, it was the canoe district and the canoe district um, represented East Maui, which was the haiku area towards Hana, out to Kaupo and Kapa'a and North Shore Kauai. And so I represented that district which was District 12 until the next reapportionment in um, 2002, um, when it was reapportioned just to be East and North Kauai. And served in the legislature for 15 years. And um, in 2011, I was appointed, uh, first I was nominated by Governor Abercrombie to the, um, to become chair of the Public Utilities Commission. So 
Uh. Yeah. Um, actually, you're appointed by Governor Abercrombie to the PUC, gave uh, Eric Kawakami an opportunity as he was appointed to fill your seat in the legislature, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and then um, Derek ran for county council yeah. and uh, later and currently yeah. uh, the seat is held by uh, state representative Nadine Nakamura. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So um, it kind of will circle back. Uh, I don't know what year it was, but at, you know, you, you with the PUC energy and all that. Um, at one time, the company was looking at putting a hydroelectric dam at Wailua River, um, and you came out against that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that was in the that was in the um, mid eighties. Yeah. And what was happening around that time, that was another kind yeah. of citizen activist kind of uh, position I took. But in the mid um, 80s, there was federal legislation, um, PURPA, that sort of encouraged all these um, renewable projects. So there was a whole bunch of hydroelectric projects proposed throughout the state. And one of the things that was happening was we just passed the, um, uh, oh God, I'm sorry. The, 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 the water, um, we had the constitutional amendment about um, water in Hawaii and you know, one of the things that was supposed to happen is a um, stream, statewide stream assessment. And um, it, it, all these plantations were, sugar plantations were um, shutting down, going out of business. And so all of these irrigation systems and water allocations were um, coming up for permit renewals, renewable renewals, renewals at that time, and uh, so I felt like the state needed to take a more comprehensive approach, looking at where hydroelectric projects should be properly sited. And um, there was actually one sited for Hanalei River, one for Lumahai. There's a second project proposed for Wainiha, um, and as you saw, one in uh, Wailua River, one that you mentioned on Wailua River. And so it was a mainland company that was proposing all these projects. And um, when I looked into them, they didn't really have a good reputation. And that's another reason why um, I opposed the project. They didn't have any credibility behind them. Um, and in the background, all of these kind of permits they said that they had were being bought and sold without these projects being built. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, in fact, <laughs> I worked on that. Um, they were gonna take water from Hanalei River through a tunnel in a mountain Right to the to the Wailua area, and mm -hmm. put a giant dam above the falls to to, yep. to hydro uh, down in Wailua. Yeah, um, yeah. They were talking about hydro. There was one uh, in Wainiha, the second mm -hmm. one above the existing one that's that's been from the early nineteen hundreds. Um, yeah, but the second one just about that time they. Went far along, and I think uh, uh, yeah, that that it, project it, yeah. Was, that was that project was um, proposed by McBride. Yeah, and I don't think there was very um, much opposition to that project. The the envir the environmental yeah. impacts were already there from the first hydro project, 
And so, you know, they were basically taking the same water and pushing it through a second system. And I think what happened there was they were ready to go. They had all the permits in place, uh, but oil prices dropped. And so it made the project no longer feasible. All right. I think, yeah, I think Weinberg was on the board probably uh, said they weren't going to do it. Um, yeah. yeah, which yeah. was, which, which is kind of sad because I think, you know, like um, you need a diverse port portfolio of um, renewable resources to get to where we want to go at 100% um, by uh, 2040. And, you know, hydro plays an important role in that. It shouldn't play a sole role, but it plays an important role. Yeah, you're talking about, you know, the price of oil. They, yeah. Their contract uh, was tied to the price of oil and yeah. the price of oil, you know, went up and down. At one time, it skyrocketed. So KUC inherited the contract and we're paying high. Yeah. I think it's been renegotiated after that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. It was part of a biodiesel plant also. Mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted to tie it into the price of oil and the price of oil went in half. So they went that business. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, so you yeah, cannot I, relate to that. Yeah. No, I think one of the um, better policies that was made was decoupling um, uh, right. the energy prices from, from oil. Right, right. That does. Okay, since you know, talking about the PUC, uh, you know, let um, you know, a lot of us don't know much about the PUC. We see, oh, you got to approve the truckers and all that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you got the you get the PUC number on the trucks. How is PUC tied to clean energy? So um, the PUC regulates the utilities, electric utilities. So um, they basically regulate. Um, Hawaiian Electric Company and its subsidiaries, um, which Maui Electric Company, um, Hawaii, and uh, Electric Light Company, as well as Hawaiian Electric Company on Oahu. And um, this is kind of unusual for a co-op, but they also regulate um, the KIUC. And so that's how it's involved in energy issues. Um, and besides electricity generation, they also um, regulate the regulated part of Hawaii gas, which is um, the pipeline system um, that delivers synthetic natural gas on Oahu. Yeah, but, um, well, you know, you guys got to, tough job, or well, you had a tough job at the PUC. But yeah. Actually, before you uh, was um, NSC Amada. Uh-huh, right. Uh, yeah, well, a couple chairs before you. Um, right. He was in at the time KIUC went in for the purchase uh, from citizens, and it was rejected the first time around. Right. Uh, we had uh -huh. to work with you that, I uh, remember, Right. And, and I think rightfully so, because the PUC came back and said that the price is too high. The purchase yeah. price was too high. And of course, you yeah. know, it was renegotiated and lowered. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it was 275 or something. It came down to 215 after a million, 15 yeah. million. Yeah. But, yeah, but it was, a, it was a tough one. I worked on that. We had to fly to the mainland a few times, negotiate yeah. with them. Uh huh. And, uh, you were on the founding board, right? Yeah, yeah. We had a couple of us were doing negotiation and stuff. I mean, I it was wasn't, you know, <laughs> I didn't know much in the beginning, but to learn. Uh, no, I learn think really we fast. all learned. Yeah, we yeah. all learned a lot um, during that period. Uh, while I was in the legislature, like I said, I was in the legislature for fifteen years and thirteen years in the legislature as the House Energy and Environmental Protection Chair. And so, you know, one of the things that I had to look at closely during the KIUC purchase um, was, you know, were there any laws that were going to be barriers in the acquisition? Um, I think the other issue that we debated at that time was, 
whether the co-op should be regulated or not, because typically um, co-ops are not. Yeah, co-ops are not. Yeah, but I yeah. think to give the community comfort um, and and to build the reputation of the cooperative, you know, was decided that it should be regulated to give some oversight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was an issue, you know, they, they didn't trust the Newport guys who knew nothing about electricity <laughs> or <laughs> things of that sort. Um, as you mentioned, there are, you know, over 900 co-ops like us on the mainland. Right. Uh, a lot of them are not regulated, but they've been around since the 1930s or something. Mm -hmm. And um, some of them are what they call light, lightly regulated. Or yeah. some sort of, not quite like us. Yeah. Um, yeah. And speaking of the PUC, the big one was the proposed sale of HECO. Can you tell right. us a little bit about that? So, um, uh, you know, this is, again, this is just from my point of view. <laughs> and... Um, during that period, I um, my term had expired and I was on a holdover position. And, um, you know, this is politics in play. I, I, I don't know how to say it, but right out. Um, had Governor Abercrombie been reelected, he had told me that he would reappoint me to the um, position, but he lost his election. Uh, Governor Ige replaced him. Uh, at one time, Governor Ige said that he was going to reappoint me. He didn't. Um, I have a feeling that one of the reasons why um, he didn't reappoint me was that I I would have given um, NextEra a fair hearing. Um, there were some forces that did not want to see uh, a mainland utility come in and buy HECO. And um, I, um, I, I, you know, as the PEC should have been um, open to hear the evidence of whether it benefited the public or not. And um, in, so in the end, I was replaced by Randy Iwase, who uh, became the chair and oversaw the, um, the acquisition or the denial of the acquisition. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there was an interesting uh, situation. Yeah. Um, I, I think the situation in Hawaii would have been a lot different. Yeah. Um, had I, the, I think HECO's acceleration to um, a cleaner, more affordable system would have happened under NextEra. Um, they, they had the chops to... Um, address a new business model um, for, for the state. And, uh, you know, and that's, that was a challenge to, throughout the company that electric utilities have to transform themselves to meet, to catch up with technology. Um, and I, I think they were one of the few companies in the nation or even in the world that would have had that ability to transform um, uh, the electric utility in Hawaii. Yeah. Well, um, here you see where the predecessor uh, was a out-of-state company, Citizens, um, then became KUC, and then we always uh, mentioning that KUC with the help of NRECA, you know, the national organization that we belong to it, has become one of the leaders in the renewable. Yeah. But what, was that your uh, PUC thing tied in in a way with your 
Is there a lawsuit against the state? A lawsuit against the state on what issue? What was that? Had, had to do with the directorship or something or oh, someone okay. else? So, so one of the um, one of the things that I, I actually I filed a lawsuit against the state regarding the appointment of commissioners, and um, to me the law was clear that. Um, a commissioner whose term expires um, sits into the in the position as a holdover until a new one is confirmed by the Senate. And this is really important because the commission is actually a um, granted its power not through the Constitution but through the legislature. It, it, it's actually an arm of the legislature. And, and to me, how um, the confirmation by the Senate is really important because in a way, the PUC has taxation powers, you know, because we set the rates, we set the fees that impact uh, rate payers or, or the public in general. And, and so, um, you know, you can't just, put anybody that hasn't been confirmed by the legislature in, in that position because of the kinds of powers um, the commissioners have um, in, in um, setting rates and, and fees. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, I actually lost the case, but the only thing I, that gives me some consolation is uh, the dissent was written by the chief justice. So the chief justice actually sided with my position. Um, but I think, you know, the, I think the high court, the Supreme Court just misunderstood that this wasn't a constitutional position or the PUC is not part of the governor's cabinet. It's actually um, granted its powers by the legislature. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Um, in any of your positions, how uh, were you involved with the approval of the rail? No, um, so that's entirely um, city and county of Honolulu um, uh, jurisdiction. Uh -huh. And um, even in the legislature, they didn't have any oversight? Um, I think some of the oversight was just the surcharge um, to fund the rail that the, the, the legislature had to pass law um, allowing the surcharges um, to happen on the GET. Okay. Yeah. Did, did that happen while you were... You were an advisor to the House Finance Committee or something? Okay, so- At some point? Yeah, no, so it was after I left um, the legislature and the PC. Yeah. And um, what, what happened was after I um, was replaced at the PC and I retired, I went and worked for the uh, House Finance Committee for a couple months um, before coming back to Kauai. Yeah. So, so as at that time you were the advisor. Yeah, or, yeah. I, did, uh, I, did, I just I was just helping uh, review budgets and stuff. Oh, okay. But yeah. there was uh, not a position set up. Oh no, I was I was strictly staff. <laughs> <laughs> strictly. Uh, okay. <laughs> which was which was great. I you know uh, I think. I, I I wish I had worked there when I was younger oh. because you get you get to see everybody's budget and when you review the budget you get to see how um, you know what the operations are like um, and what the policy priorities are within departments and stuff. So. Um, uh -huh. yeah. Um, yeah, I just. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, there was a picture. You you were, were you working in Washington D.C. also? 
Yeah, when I was 18 years old, I got yeah. um, hired by Senator Fong's office um, as his receptionist. Oh, oh good. <laughs> good. Well, yeah, that's where a lot of people get to start, you know. With, yeah. With and the, I, you got their foot in the door there. Yeah, and, he, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, I cherish that part because I mean I was a girl from Lanai, yeah. you know? and this going there to work that was my first trip to the mainland. Oh, and well, um, and you know, and it, it was a re really exciting period because um, you know it was nothing like Washington D.C. is today. You know, there was a lot of bipartisanship. Um, when I was there, Watergate was happening. Um, you know, Senator Fong was, um, had a lot of seniority and he was involved in a lot of key issues like immigration, um, uh, women's issues, choice issues. Um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, even though he was a Republican, there was no was kind of that was gonna be my next statement. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, he, you know, he was a very um, liberal, re liberal Republican who, who supported um, women in choice, who supported immigration. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, I really appreciated the work that he did because, you know, there was no real distinction between the parties um, yeah. because of the bipartisanship. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's uh, interesting. Uh, fast forward, we don't have much time. Fast forward to now or recently, you're the head of the Kauai uh, Democratic Party, this chair. Yeah. Where yeah. do you see the uh, party heading? Well, we need to rebuild the party. Um, I, I think, um, you know, there's, there's an identity issue and um, it's, you know, we, we need to be really clear on our value, values and inclusiveness and um, understand how um, we can all work together. Um, I, I, I think there are too many litmus test kind of questions that divide people within the party. Um, you know, we're not going to agree on all issues, but there's some fundamental values that we have to work on to pull the party together. And you see it on a local level and you see it on a national level. You, you know, we're... we're um, the Republicans use the progressiveness of the demo, progressive wing of the party against the party itself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah we've got uh, just about a minute left. Uh, yeah, we got new blood, like uh, Tyler Dos Santos Tam as the head of the state Democratic Party. Yeah. So hopefully we can uh, move forward. Um, yeah, I believe uh, yeah. he's done a great job. Yeah, oh, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've got a little bit of time left. You got any closing statements? Uh, no, I, I, I think... What, what are you going to do from here? <laughs> oh, so I, I've just been... Um, since, since I retired, you know, I spent the first year of my retirement uh, writing um, a blog, a book, and a chapter for a... Um, uh, mainly geared at the financial sector of energy. Um, I now sit on the board of the Hanalei Initiative and Hale Halabai Ohana Ohanalei, and those are two um, North Shore nonprofits. Um, Hale Hal I mean, sorry, Hanalei Initiative works with another nonprofit in um, managing the shuttle and access system at Hyena State Park. And that's really exciting because um, it really changed Hyena State Park to be more cultural and natural resource focused and managing the um, number of people going out there. Yeah, thanks. And uh, your daughter has a nice juice shop. 
really like their juices. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I, yeah. when I helped her write her business plan and okay. held her hand during the early years. Oh, and perfect. It's so nice to see her being yeah. successful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. yeah, we're running out of time. Okay, okay. thank you, Mina. Um, we've been speaking with Mina Morita from Hanalei, Kauai, Hawaii. Thank you for watching Politics in Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii the great staff and volunteers. If you like the show, please share it with your friends and consider a contribution to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Dennis Isaki. Mahalo, aloha, ahoi ho, alama pono. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.